Yeah, lots of bruises, I'm sure. Evans to the net, what a pass, can Tony shoot, he scores! My goodness, what a play! Quick toss before we start the episode. Today's episode of the Weekly Watch is all about box lacrosse. And why Samir and myself would never cut it in the NLL. Like, not well, even close. okay, speak for yourself, man. I feel oh, you like, think you can make a run? Uh, I feel like right, I could, dude. I mean, I just have to put on some pounds. It's a couple of LBs. Yeah, maybe a little height too, huh? Wow, oh. shots fired. Okay, back to the episode. Over the weekend, we watched this video from Adam Gittleman at the NLL Combine in San Diego. Now, this is a field goalie playing box lacrosse, diving, scoring goals, making incredible assists. And this video is super entertaining, and it just got us thinking. Is box lacrosse better than field lacrosse? Whoa, okay, okay. wait. Before, before you freak out. Yeah, before we sound the alarms here, yeah. Hear us out. Now, really what we're talking about is the question of does box lacrosse make you a better overall lacrosse player? Right now is a really hot time for box lacrosse. The NLL season is about to start. You have field players who are playing in the league, like you got Matt Rambo, who's on a roster. He's on the Philly Wings. And you have the Team USA box lacrosse tryouts for the World Games next year. And this is always really fun because you get to see guys like Trevor Baptiste and Rob Pinnell, guys who traditionally don't play box, try their hand at box lacrosse. A lot of these guys have been playing box to train themselves, like Baptiste played in the CBLL, mm -hmm. which we did a documentary on. Here's the link for that. And a lot of the best players in college lacrosse right now are box players. So what is it about box lacrosse that makes you such a good field player? It's the box. That's really simple, that's all it is. The box is a constraint. You're in a smaller space, and you have to be much better with your vision, with your quickness, with your agility, with your stick, to make decisions in a shorter amount of time and in a smaller space. So let's talk about three guys from College Across and break down their playing style. And tell you how their influence from the box game helps them on the field. First up, we've got Jeff Teat from Brampton, Ontario, who's playing at Cornell. He also played for Team Canada. He really uses his body to get in on his defensemen and then is really good with his vision and has incredible wrists. I mentioned it off the top. He's got the best wrists in college lacrosse. He'll throw behind the back passes or just quick flick of the wrist passes that are incredible. And now that he has more space on the field, it really opens up his opportunities. Having good wrist strength and being able to pass with tight corners or a ton of pressure on you, that's a skill you get in box lacrosse. But when it translates on the field, there's way more space. It allows guys to get way more open and have wide open looks at the cage. Next up is Trey LeClaire at Ohio State. So whereas Jeff Teat is an incredible assist man, Trey LeClaire is an incredible shooter. And he has honed a lot of this skill from the box game. You'll see him dodging towards the cage and keeping the stick in one hand. He can also score from deep with pinpoint accuracy. A goal by LeClaire! The goal in field lacrosse is way bigger than the goal in box lacrosse. That makes LeClaire way more of a threat in the field game. Guys who play with one hand in the box game can do things on the field that a defenseman has never even thought of before. Trey LeClaire does this all the time. He probably plays close to 100 games a year, being from Canada. You know, as soon as this season ends, he's going right back up north and playing indoor. And that brings us to our next player in the college game, which is Tahoga. Tahoga is another one of these box players, and the first thing that I noticed when he came on the field is his physicality. He can take pressure like none other. This guy grew up playing indoor box lacrosse. He loves when defenders get aggressive with him. You're playing to his strength. In the box game, it's a way more rough game. You have guys getting their helmets taken off. You have huge hits, and he's just used to dealing with pressure. All right, move go. That's close. Cool. Well, you can hear the pads popping up here. When someone's on his hand, when he has multiple guys on him, he's able to power through and put it in the back of the net. But also, he's incredibly creative. And with one hand, he can do what most guys can't do with two hands. I mean, Tahoga is incredibly unpredictable. Who would have thought he would have scored this goal under his legs at this moment? No one. There is literally no one out there that can tell you that that's what he was going to do. I promise you that. Still one of the coolest goals I've ever seen. For all three of these guys, the foundation for their game is based on box lacrosse. And there's a lot you can learn from the way that they play. Right now is a really hot time for box lacrosse. The NLL is starting up, the draft is actually next week. As we said, the Team USA tryouts are coming up and the World Indoor Championships are next year. The Man Cup is going on. Check out this goal, by the way, from the Man Cup. Diving, 
one-handed to a BTB. Like, it's just so creative. Bottom line, watching box lacrosse or playing box lacrosse will make you a better field player. So whether it's better than field lacrosse or not, I don't know. You guys answer that one. That's up to you guys to answer. Obviously, there's a lot you can learn from field too, but comment below what do you think's better, box lacrosse or field lacrosse? I got a question. If you could only play one, what would you play? Like, if, if there's uh, only one type of lacrosse that you could play. I've only ever really played field lacrosse. Yeah. For me, it would just be 3v3 mini games. Oh, I didn't know that was an option. I thought you were asking between best. box and field. Yeah, I just wanted to say. Those are yeah. my favorite. That's my favorite type of lacrosse. Next week will be the last episode of the Weekly Watch for the year. We are going to be taking a bit of a break, and because of this, we want to make next week's episode all about you. The clips that you send us really make this show what it is. So next week, we want to honor all of you. Send us your clips to info at thelacrossenetwork.com. These can be new clips, or these can be just some of your favorites from the past year. Send them our way. We're going to highlight them next week. And in your subject line for the email, make sure to put Weekly Watch Finale 2018 so that we know to include it in the episode. We're going to try and include as many as we can, but just send us whatever you have. Anything, even if you just want to send a clip of yourself saying what you think about the Weekly Watch, what you've thought about it over the past couple years. That would be really nice. We've been doing this show for four, four years. years. Every wow. single week, four years. What? So thank you to all of you for watching. Make sure to send us your clips next week. We will be sure to highlight them. That is it for this episode of The Weekly Watch. Make sure to comment below what's better, box lacrosse or field lacrosse. I imagine it's gonna get pretty heated in the comments. And send us your clips for next week, all right? Later. Later.